All righty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and we are on air. We've got the roof 95% welded where we need it welded and want it welded. Um, I'm going to start putting some mud on the car, and we're going to start right with the roof um, on the back window that we have moved ahead, and we've actually butt welded it together. Uh, I'm going to put the level on it and show you exactly what's going on there, or this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's not going to need much there. Let's we get the level up there. It's not going to need much there right in the center, but we're going to put some glass on the roof. I, f I just feel like I want to put glass on the roof. I feel like the car is welded up good enough that it does not need glass in most places. And the reason being is what, what is going to lift off our filler if I just put filler on it. But I feel like glass is needed in certain areas. It's just, it's just kind of a nice material. I'm just trying to make sure nothing happens, I guess. Um, but everything is welded up nice. I don't feel like anything, any condensation or any water is going to get off or get in behind anything and knock it off. When you start doing body work on the side of your car, down the bottom of your doors and that sort of stuff, yes, you are going to get condensation water running inside the doors. There's no car probably that does not leak. Um, let's start with some fiberglass. We're going to get that weld mark right across the roof there. Thanks for coming back. We really appreciate it. And uh, it's coming on to the new year, is it not? We got some fiberglass here, and you can see that stuff. I, I say it every time. It's dense. It's Listen, if you have a spot um, that you've warped up or you've played with, and it's just sort of a mess, I'm going to say a mess. It's just something that it's hard to deal with. This, this fiberglass is really good to put in that mess, and the reason because it's dense, it's hard, um, it'll take that boinginess away if you can get it in the low spot that you're going for. But basically all I want to do is I just want to cover the weld mark with fiberglass. And this fiberglass too, when you put it on, if you put it on like that, nice and dense, you're going to have to come back and grind that fiberglass off generally to get where you need to go to put filler on. I do not want to grind the fiberglass to get to go where I'm going with the roof. I want to uh, seal the seam up with the fiberglass and basically that's it. I do not want to grind it. I do not want to sand it. I, I basically do not want to do anything with it other than use it for strength. So I'm just going to put a little bit of resin in this. This is uh, resin that you would use in fiberglass. So if you were mixing up some fiberglass like a mat Almost, you'd have some resin, you'd have some hardener, and then you'd put it in it, and then you would uh, do your fiberglass mat. I'm taking the resin and dumping it in the fiberglass to make the fiberglass less dense. Yeah, excuse me for a second. I'm going to put make this up in here. This is going to make this nice and creamy and runny and that sort of stuff. That's what it's going to do to it. It's going to take the denseness out of it. You can see it's getting nice and creamy there. I want it more creamy. I want it just to lay it over the seam of the weld. I'm not looking to grind this off. I'm looking for, I already said it once, strength. Get going here. I just grab an old board from anything when I'm mixing this stuff up, body fill. It does not matter what kind of board you have. You can have steel, you can have plastic, you can have cardboard, you can have whatever you want. I just grab this plastic board. I'm going to thin it out a little bit more. And the only reason I am is because I want to. No, I want it to lay down in that seam just as nice as possible. We'll throw some fiberglass on other places. But on, like in all honesty, for me to throw fiberglass on something like that where that's welded up so nice and it just, just needs a little bit of love, I'd be foolish to start throwing fiberglass on that and then grind it all off when there's nothing there to really fill or do. There might be some fiberglass going on here because when we put this piece in here, it did not fit up to the roof, so I had to put a piece of metal in there to fit to the roof. Also, when this car was put together, roof panel goes in that way. Roof comes over, panel goes in that way. This window part comes up and then goes in that way. Then the drip rail goes in between it, then they're all spot welded together. Well, when they spot welded this and the roof drip, roof, uh, drip rail molding and the roof together, they did not get it perfectly flush. Hard to believe, I know. But it, it's not perfectly flush there, so when you weld it and put pieces in it, it, it doesn't not look 
the greatest, but it, you know, when you're chopping a car, um, you expect that and you deal with it, you overcome it. Basically this whole car, um, when we cut the roof off it, it's just a matter of overcoming all the obstacles that you have to go through, basically. Oop, did not shake it, just spit out the stuff. Not shake it, but knead it, I guess. Should knead this stuff first. It's been a while since I put some on. It's been a while. I put a bit of hardener in there. I've got that scratched up all the way along there. Looking good. Looking good. Not as good as Jolene, but looking good. You can tell how much, how less dense that is since I put that resin in there. It also slows down the drying process, so you have a little bit more time of, to put it on. Everybody does this different, so, you know, take what you like and throw away the rest. If you don't like something, make sure that you don't do it. Basically, I had a little bench here I'm going to stand on. Some of, the, some of the seams I will fiberglass and some of the seams I will not. <sighs> not stripping the car. We said that right from the beginning. Said that right from the beginning. I'm going to take it off or put it on my, my seam just like a drywaller would on the ceiling. Put it on and then we'll run her across and make her look good. And I showed you the level trick. What's going on there? We just need some in the middle and then we'll feather it off from there. That's going to be lots, lots. Gorgeous you are, Joy. Gorgeous. I'm going to put some on here because I got some. Why not? Tina. Hello there, she says. All the roof has been sanded. So as you see that filler going up on top of that roof, it's been sanded. No harm, no foul. I put filler over top of paint and, and, and other materials, not lacquer primer, but I will put filler over top of paint. And the reason being is it sticks. Just have to scratch it. Leave that. Let's do another strike here and see if we can't get this to lay down better. I find that the, the slower you go, sometimes, sometimes the better it'll lay out. We'll put that right back on the old the old tray. Didn't want that to happen down through the middle of that, but it did. Take a little more off. If you recall, we didn't need much there, so there's no sense putting a whole bunch on there. on that metal cover it up the reason being is I like to cover it all that way there when I sand it I'm sanding filler and then I'll take it down to the metal with the resin in it I get to play with it a little bit longer I do as you see try and take some rough stuff out of it and maybe I won't even have to sand it, it'll be so nice. But I doubt it. Got a little high spot right here. Take some off it. Ah! Should have stayed out of it.
Yeah, and for to to take and put a little bit of something here and put a little bit there and a little bit there, it's a hard thing to do. You might as well just take the the initiative and cover it all because you're going to be blocking it all to make it to come one playing field. Go to the others. I'm going to knock this off, clean this up. You can tell that looks better already. Just you making it all one, um, it makes it look better already. I'm going to mix them up and we'll go to the other side and we'll do the other side of the roof and the other side exactly what I've done there. See how dense that is? Like it's very dense. I've got quite a bit on there. I'm thinking that this should be. Yeah, sticky stuff. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Probably should have a pair of gloves on. But at nighttime, when I go in the house, I got something to do. Just pick it off my fingers. Stand there, sit there for hours. Just picking it off my fingers. Something to do. All right, baby? Or it's a reason for Jolene to say, don't touch me. Your hands are rough. I've had enough. All right, thin her down. That fiberglass is still sort of soft right now. I still could go over it and probably mess with it a little bit. That's one nice thing about the resin. It slows down the drying process. Me and Jolene was able to wake up late this morning I got Jolene coffee in bed this morning because she was so nice to me yesterday every day actually but anyways we got up late this morning we got a chance to go to Subway and have our have our breakfast we have to thank is it Sheila yeah. that got us to Subway thank you Sheila she got us a Subway gift certificate for Christmas that's Jolene's aunt. So we're going to go to the other side. Not everything will get fiberglassed. I just, I, I just feel like this part should put it on. And this is a step, in all honesty, this step can take you backwards if you start putting fiberglass on things that does not need it. Like um, for me to put fiberglass on them doors, on the right there, that would just end up ruining my day. And the reason I'll, I will say that is because I'll end up taking more off than I'll put on. It's, and, it's, and it happens that way. One more time. I feel like it's not flat enough up here. Right there is what I want it. Good. Awesome. Now, that doesn't look. I'm going to put some on. Didn't look like it was sanded right there, but you can tell on this one, if you look at this one, this 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 window here is way out further than that roof by quite a little bit, and that's from the factory. There's nothing I can do about it other than weld it up and fix it. And also, the better you put it on, the much funner you'll have taking it off. Oh, 
we'll go with that. I'm happy with that. Julian thinks the door tops look better round than square, and I do too. Don't we, baby? Yeah. Yep. She said yes. Yes. So me and Jolene, I told you this morning, me and Jolene went to Subway and had our breakfast. And then after Subway, generally we'll stop off at the antique store. The store's name is twice as nice. Al and his wife runs it. We generally go in there quite a bit. And this morning we picked up, uh, we got the, the Victor speaker. Um, I don't even play guitar, but that's a pretty cool old speaker with the Victor on it. I like it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and we got some uh, license plate toppers. They're not in the greatest shape. But we have some rough cars that are in patina that them ones will really want and look cool. Uh, that one there is quite nice shape, but them two there definitely would go on the back of a nice old ride, that's for sure. So we had fun doing that this morning. It's always fun when you find something that you like. I'm going to take this off. So basically where I have put the fiberglass on now, I am not going to, I'm not going to scrub it off with the, with the sander. I'm basically going to leave it there and I'm going to put the filler over top of it and that way there uh, the fiberglass will be there. If I take and grind it off, it's so thin that I'm going to end up hitting metal and it's not really going to be doing the job that I want it to do. Uh, I'm going to put a little more fiberglass along here. I've got the post to do. I want to do that front post. Kind of thinner up some so it goes on nicer. There is spots that you put this fiberglass on dense like that, like I explained, like when you have something that's been uh, warped or oil canned or something like that and you've done a bunch of work to it and you've got it back in place and you're happy with it, throw a skim of fiberglass on it and leave it. Throw it in the low spots and leave it and then you'll have something that's a little bit more strong. That'll hold it. You can see how dense that still is. Something like me when I was going to school. <laughs> Not true. Maybe. I wasn't thick, honey. I was just wasn't. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at, don't you, baby? Huh? I wasn't too thick. Probably was a little thick in high school, a little overweight, probably. Sometimes. Joan, you ever been overweight in your life? Grade six, she ate too many cookies. Girl, God, cookies. So we got this thinned down quite a bit. That fiberglass over there is st probably still not dry because of the resin. It's just starting to just starting to do it now. So, in all honesty, if you're doing it with your car, doing it with your car. If you're filling out your car. Um, this resin trick here will slow it down for you if you're, you know, wanting it to, it will. I put the hair in the other one, didn't I? I don't know. I was going to ask. Jeez, I hope so. Looks the same color. I'm thinking it did. Same color. Sometimes it won't harden if you don't put the hardener in it, that's for sure. The resin is to thin it out, the hardener is to make it hard. If I'm, when, when I put body fill over top of the fiberglass, if I hit the fiberglass, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. That's, I'm, I'm saying it's okay, but I do not want to grind that off and try to get that flat and smooth and hit metal and all that stuff. Do not want to do that, really. Um, that just kind of defeats the purpose of putting it on, I guess, of taking it off. Put some in that time, didn't I, baby? Good. We're just gonna go along top of this door.
I'm going to spread this on as I go. And the only reason I'm going to do that is because it's just a small area. Pretty hard to stand back and strike it. Just want to get those little pinholes and that sort of stuff on this. Get in there. This is a hard place, or not a good place to weld. It spits and sputters. I'm not sure what's in between the welds, but uh, we cleaned it and welded it the best we could all the way. The only time we'd spot something, I guess, would be maybe in the floor or something like that, and then you'd want to seam seal it after you're done. Yes, you would. We have split the roof open there when we opened that up. Uh, we've got it buzzed off. We had a hole there for a, probably a light. There was an antenna hole there, but we, we split that. And what I'm thinking is, is we really want to have that nice and strong there. I am going to put the fiberglass to that because it's my chop and I do what I want to. Is that how it goes? Huh? No, oh, I keep blocking you? Sorry, sweetheart. I get in the way of the shot, boys, I could get in trouble. Get in the way of the shot. I noticed that a couple times I get in your way, but I'm just trying to do my job as you're trying to do your job, sweetheart. Mmm, she says, keep doing it. Let's <laughs> find out, huh? <laughs> just want every all this all the paint has been sanded. Uh, The only time I'm thinking that we'll have an issue with any of this filler going over top of paint is if the if when you go to sand it, it peels off. It doesn't allow. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little harder to get at it than you think. Just don't want it on the door. Not really, not yet. Putting it on quite thick here. The reason being is there's been a lot of work here. I don't want nothing to happen to any of it. If you know what I'm saying. Just trying to get it on all the bare metal. A little spot there, I can put some on. Not a whole bunch, just a little. Be pointless for me to put a whole bunch on there. That's not bad. It's on there quite heavy, but let's face it, that's where a lot of work was done. I'll put this right on here. I have no issues at all putting lots of fiberglass here, and I'll tell you why. Because when they built the car, they had no issues putting lots of lead there, <laughs> did they? If you've ever um, stripped a car down on your post of your car, they had no issues putting lead there. So I had no issues putting fiberglass there. It's just a new, a new way of doing things, I guess, is fiberglass. I'm going to have to weld that hole up right there before I do that. Got some left. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some off the other side. The post I'm fine with. The post is going to need it. Nope. I'm not going to take it off. I'm just going to get some more going. The only reason I'm not going to take it off because I don't want to. I'm going to probably end up needing it anyways. Try not to waste it. Uh, what do I want on the other side? Let's check it out here for a second. Any little bit around that drip rail? 
I, I need to do some work there first. Not going to do that. Nope, not going to do that. Um, I have a seam here where I welded here, and I have a little bit going on here. I might put some on this little seam right here. Why not? A little bit there. Mix up a little bit. We'll put a little bit on that. We won't put too much on that we have to sand it off. We'll just put enough on that we put filler right over top of it. Stuff that's dry up in there, that fixes it. Like this stuff can be used, like I don't know, same fiberglass and body fill can be used for many things. Like this is not the only thing. It's kind of, it's not kind of funny. It's just. It's just something that a lot of people, you could use this for many, 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 many different things as fiberglass and as body fill. Uh, I can remember when I bought my second house, I had a stair railing that would come down. It was, it was a fancy stair railing at one time, come down around and around the circle and it had a pole at the bottom. Um, it had been smashed off and broke from the pole. To replace the stair railing and put all those things all in and I don't know what they, the spindles all in would probably cost thousands and thousands of dollars to replace what went on because it was smashed at the bottom where that big pole come up and the railing went around. Well, I get out my fiberglass and my body fill and my screws and my nails and all that stuff. I got it all stuck back together really good. Um, and then I proceeded to mix up some fiberglass and put it in around where the railing had been broke. I connected it back. I got it back together somewhat pretty good, sturdy. Then I took my fiberglass and I put it all in where the wood was in the shape that it went to the railing. I fiberglassed it, I body filled it, I sanded it, and I painted it. I put carpet down the steps. A million dollars it looked like. It really looked really, 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 really nice, you know, where um, it did not before, where it was broken. And, and what, was you, what would you do? Most carpet would got to replace it. You know, we can't fix that. It's junk. It's broke. Well, um, I actually made um, a really nice looking stairway out of it. And uh, it, all it took was some fiberglass and some body fill. Same as in your house. I got a chip on the doors right now. When the door's got a chip on it, you know, how do you fix a chip in the door? Like you get a nice white door. It's got a big chip out of the wood. It's gone. Well, mix up some body fill. And some fiberglass, fill the chip full, sand it off, and paint it white again. Fixes it. It's uh, quite a quite a fix actually, and uh, use it if you have to. I keep getting my arm in that stuff there, and I don't like it. I don't like it. So hopefully, what's going to happen is, um, I've got. If you come on the other side, uh, Nathan has begun with. The vent window, vent windows, vent windows in this car. He started doing the vent windows in this, and he started doing the vent window on this side Friday. Uh, we started getting it, you know, we're getting to the point where things have to be done. So he started doing the vent window on this side, and I was really happy that he jumped in and said, you want me to do that? And yeah, man, go for it. That's kind of one of the jobs a lot of people are scared of. I've done it once on the Pontiac, and it was pretty cool, but Nathan has jumped in and went going for that, so I'm just going to leave that to him. Hopefully, I can get some mud on the car, and then me and Doug can keep on sanding or Doug can keep on sanding because there is more things I'm going to do this car to make it bad chattified. I and mean, there's more things I'm going to do to it. There's going to be some custom stuff I'm going to do back around the taillights. There's going to be some custom stuff up in the front. And there might even be a big surprise on the side of the body. I'm not sure if it's going to be a surprise or not, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So we're just kind of taking it in steps. Like I said, we want to take this one to paint. So um, to take this one to paint within the month or the month and a half, whatever, how long it's going to take us to do it. Um, things have to be done in a certain order, I guess. We have to keep everybody, everybody's mojo flying because um, if you've watched the show, you obviously know that Nate and Doug don't come here every day. They come here when it's time. But uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing that. <laughs> I'm going to get this ready for him, or ready for us. Don't 
don't want to grind it off. I just want to put enough on that it's underneath the body fill. And yeah, see, there's a seam right there. I don't know what I'm doing with that yet. I think that comes off. And there's a seam there that must be like a drip rail molding. This piece, this piece gets spot welded together with that in the middle. Not sure if I have to weld that down there or not, but if I do, I'll have to grind the fiberglass off or whatever comes off. I'll take it off and then we'll go from there. But this is the start. This is the start. Not stripping the car, I think I've said that a couple times, but in all honesty, I don't wanna go there. I just want to chop it and have fun. I'm hoping that the everything sticks good with the paint sanded the way it's been painted or sanded. I'm hoping everything sticks nice. If it does not, that means I'm back into filling it out again, doesn't it? We'll go with that. Not sure what's going on there right now. I'm just gonna leave it. Just gonna leave it. Had a little bit of filler there to start with. That's okay with me. It's not lifting off. I'm not gonna pull it out. Unless you're restoring something, I guess. I guess you wanna pull it out and strip it all off. But. Now I'm hoping when I sand this car right here, I'm hoping that I'll get this line to come right around and come right around with the roof. That's how we've made it look. So that's how we want it. That's how I want it. Hmm. Let's do this. finger paint a little bit. Making sure it gets in there nice. Beautiful. Not as beautiful as you, Jolene, but beautiful. No mistakes. Gonna have to make up my mind real quick on that, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, left it. Everything should stay pretty decent, I'm thinking with it being sanded. It's pretty hard there. 
I'll mix a little bit more and put it on that. Not much though, because it's not much as needed. Ooh, put a lot of resin in that, I did. I do the other post on the other side, but it was not. Now, if you get too much resin in your fiberglass, it will become like really, really, really runny. I'm hoping that you know what to do. Put some more fiberglass in it. <laughs> Just sticking it back out again, basically. A little bit left there to do. That there will shape that with a grinder, probably or should grinder or flapper wheel of some sort will shape that. And the reason we'll shape that is because it's got more on than it needs, but we want that. Good stuff right there, boy. Good stuff. Like if you wanted to, you know, glue something together, jam some of this stuff inside of it and glue it together, wow, it'll, it'll really glue it together. Like, door handle come off the garage. I mixed up some body fill, put it inside the door handle, put the door handle, jam the door handle back on, never had a problem since. It's on there. Small stuff, like I said before, filler. I might put a little bit of glass on that, maybe, I'm not sure, but the filler seems like it probably would be good enough. I'm not going to do the post on this side, I'm just going to do the roof on this side. And the reason being is the post is not done being welded. Can't put anything on that yet, didn't strip that blue paint off yet good enough. It is, you must admit, it's going to give this thing a different look with no drip rails on it. Gonna put some more on here. Corner of the doors turned out really nice. Jolene said, were you expecting to do that? Because you never told me. Well, it's just kind of something that happened, you know. little off here so I'm gonna put more on it alrighty let's go to the other side get this job going Throw a little bit of glass on this up here because we have it. And it's scratched and ready. Doug did that yesterday as I was ready to call it a day. C. 
So, if you're interested in a chop car, and, and you know, a lot of people are, like chop cars, if you want to know if your chop, the chop car that you're looking at is a good chop car, this is, this is a secret for you. Go around all the door tops and see how, see how the thickness is where the door tops are. So where I put this piece in, if it wasn't that decent of a job, that would be right thick there because it wouldn't have been welded together nice and right and tight and, you know, it wouldn't have been nice and thin. If you see rounded door corners and your door corners that, that thick, well, they probably didn't do a fantastic job on doing the, the corner. So if, you're, if you look on a chop car, just saying on chop, if you want to buy a chop car, go around and look at the, the, the door tops and see if they're as nice as the, the edge of the door and the bottom of the door and the edge of the door because that's where uh, the door is supposed to be thin or thinner like there's you know it's not the door's not supposed to be real real thick i think i need more here so i'm just going to jam it there and i'm going to leave it there or put it there because it's going to need it not all of it probably but it's going to need it. i can i can see it so we'll just leave that there and it has glass there like I said, no harm, no foul. They put lots of lead there, so I should be able to put lots of fiberglass. So, yeah, so if you really want to know if you're, if you're looking at a chop car, look at the doors. Go around the doors, see how thick they are. If they're thick, 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 eh, they might have got messed up in a few places, but all that stuff has to be filled out inside and outside to make that door fit a chop car. So you'll know when they put the door back together how well it was done. I am going to, I'm going to mix up a little bit of filler. I'm going to run it across the roof here. And, I'm, and the basic reason I'm going to run it across the roof here, because this is dry now. Now I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do without knocking off the fiberglass. Most people, or generally most times, you'll come along and you'll knock off all the heads of the fiberglass and then put your filler on. On some of the places I will with a piece of sandpaper, but on the roof where I need it, that little bit of filler, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put filler right over top of it. When I go to buff it off, if I hit fiberglass, no harm, no foul. One thing it will be, I'll know that I'm close to the metal because I never put much on. Hope that makes sense. I'm going to probably squaff it all. I might as well have enough to do it all, had I one time. Baby? Baby! I like to have a wide... I'm going to use this squeegee, I think. Knock this one off here. Ah, put it on the wrong side. Yeah. Let's put that aside for a second. Fina walking around like she's a lost puppy. Huh? Let's put some harder in this stuff. I've got Z grip. Usually I'll use a Napa fill first and then I'll do a finer, more expensive fill. They're saying that this is supposed to be, I think it's 4% with the hardener. So if you split that filler, the much of filler you have, if you split it in half, that'd be 50. Split it in half again, that'd be 25. And then you split it down, you get 4%. That's how much hardener is supposed to be in that from what I understand from school. I did take the auto body course when I was younger, but I didn't make it all the way through. <laughs> I laugh to myself now, but it wasn't funny at the time. Bad Chad was being bad. But I did learn the basics. I got to learn how to mix body fill and got to learn how to weld with a torch. And then I was on my way. On the other side. Might have to put some more on. Don't know if I have enough. And basically what I want to do is I want to cover it. I want to cover it. I'm not going to have enough, I can tell already. I'm going to put more on than I need. Now that's for sure. Because if I don't, you know where I'm going. I'm going back to the can and I'm mixing more. And every time I go back to that can, that's called time. All right, let's do 
again. I'm going to do it on this edge just because the center is the part where we want it. Now we got to build it in the center and then we'll haul our center across. One more time, going the other way. Whatever way you're pulling this squeegee is the way that the body fill goes. So when I'm going this way, I'm pulling filler that way. When I'm going this way, I'm pulling filler this way. And one of the hardest things to do in this filling process is getting the filler in the position that you need it. <laughs> That's one of the one of the things that's the hardest thing to do. We're doing some for the other side. Now I'm just going to take what's left over here and I'm going to put it where? Right here. Why not? Why would I waste it? Got a little hard thing there. Don't want that in there. There we go. We'll get this swiped off. Now you can almost see that now that I've got that filler on there, we're almost done. We haven't even done anything other than put a little filler on, put a little fiberglass on it first. Now we put body filler on it. But when you look across that roof, we haven't, we're not going to need anything more, I don't think, by the looks of the thing. It looks really good. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. Do do. You can tell how creamy this filler is, and that's why it spreads out nicer than fiberglass, because it's not as dense. We have some mud work going on down along there. Uh, the Travis, the guy that sold me the car, told me that he'd welded up the, the holes in it. He didn't have the stainless, and that's no harm, no foul. And we're just going to have to make sure that it's fairly straight when we go to paint. You paint it? Oh, Jolene said she would paint the car. Ooh, that scares me. And she probably would, no doubt in my mind. You know what, baby? I think you can do it. No? I know you can do it. What's that? That's true. And Jolene's surprised. Now that Jolene talks about that, she hit. She surprised the hay out of me. We went to the, we were in the airport and she generally goes to the little stores there to look at the makeup and, and, and the jewelry and that sort of stuff. And I said, yeah, go ahead. I'll just stay in the little tavern here and have a drink, poo poo, you know, whatever. Well, she came back with a watch. She said, I bought a watch. She said, I pulled the trigger. And I said, wow. She said, but it doesn't fit. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense. Why, why would you buy the watch? She said, well, I'm gonna fix it. I said, oh, why are you now? You're gonna become a watch person, are you? So anyway, she bought this watch, and it was way too big. And uh, one day, we were up here in the garage, and she had her watch. And um, <laughs> she needed to take some links out of it. Well, I haven't got any, I haven't got any watch-making um, material here, or punches, or drills, or whatever she needed there. She needed to punch. What she needed is to punch out the um, pin in the strap. So she came up with the idea that she's going to take one of the drills, drill bits, and turn it around and make a punch out of it. Well, lo and behold, she did it. And she did it twice. She took links out of the watch twice. I could not believe it. And the reason I couldn't believe it, because I would never attempt it. And uh, she did it. She's badass. Now. I'm going to take Phil going that way now. I want to take it and put it back up on the car. Slower I go, just the nicer it leaves the path. And if you don't breathe, it's just a little nicer. I can hold my breath for four minutes. I used to be able to anyways. Probably not anymore. 
Maybe if I fired it. Ah. It's nice, Joey, but it's not as nice as you. I'm gonna do it one more time. Did not put no resin in this filler, so when it's time to get out of it, I'll know because it'll mess up on me. Alrighty, we got some fill on the car. As you can see across that roof, I don't like. I, I think that's it. Like one one slim of fiberglass and one coat of filler. We've got that aimed up in there nicely. As far as I'm concerned, but that's the way I wanted it to do it. I didn't want to lay lay way back down here. I didn't want to do what everybody else did. We want to shove the window way ahead on it, make a long catwalk on it. I felt like, what can I say, let's do it a little differently. And with this way here, there's a, not going to be a whole bunch of fill work going on because that panel is nice and right. Uh, we have everything else looking pretty nice and right. Got some work to do around the post and the top of the doors um, to make the door tops look right. Yes, we do. But uh, that won't be hard to handle, and I'll show you how I do it. No problem whatsoever. Rest of it, no more fiberglass. Well, I shouldn't say that. I probably will put fiberglass on some of that stuff in there with the door post like we got that all ground up and fixed now we got that all done you can see before I had the well the tops of doors I got them grounded up nice all the way around and see this is what you would be looking for if like I said you're looking at chop car you want to see if that seam up here how thick that seam is all the way around the all around the door post because you know if you know a chop car the doors have been messed with so this is the stuff that you want to look at to see if you're getting the car that you think you're getting if the filler is like way, way, way thick than the door is supposed to be, you know what's going on. It probably didn't go together exactly the way um, they wanted it to, or they needed the filler to make it look the way they want it to. And I would do the exact same thing. <laughs> That's the way it is. You do what you have to do. Generally, when it comes to a body man, if you're like, if you welded up the car, you have done all the metal work to it and you think it's fantastic, the body man will let you know whether it's any good or not. And the reason I say this is because I've, I've done body work on a couple cars that have been fixed up and they, the, the, the welding jobs looked excellent. It really did. Like the cars looked excellent. But when I got down and dirty on it and got working on it, when um, the patch goes on, if, if it's higher than everything else, well then you've got to bring all your fill work up to the height of the patch that has been put on, if that makes sense. So if I've got a patch on here, and it's higher than here, and here, and there, and there, that means I have to build the mud up on the car as high as that patch is to, to make it look good, basically. If uh, that's what has to happen, like it, there's a big difference between welding something up and filling it. The body man is the man that knows um, it all basically is what I'm trying to say. I want to thank everybody for coming back. I really appreciate it. I want, to I want to thank you everybody for following this one. We still got lots of custom work to do to it, that's for sure. But we want to get some work done to the tail. We want to get some work done to the front. We got to have a lot of body work and sanding going on. We got vent windows to do. We got glass to make. We're going to try to take this thing into paint. We are going to take it into paint. Just as simple as that. Uh, we're going to take it into paint and do the least amount of body work to it as possible. Thanks everybody for coming back. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. You come back tomorrow and we'll be here. Down and out.